Hello, I'm Pete Gerlach. I'm the author of the nonprofit educational website um, called Break the Cycle. That website presents eight self improvement lessons. The second of those lessons is how to improve your communication. One thing I've learned in the 40 years or so that I've studied interpersonal communication, including thinking, by the way, is that there are a number of phrases that most people are unaware of that are very powerful towards improving the quality of and the outcome of typical interpersonal communications. So what I want to do in this video is present at least some of the phrases that I bet you don't use and you could. Consider trying these out. Speak them out loud. See what you feel. Consider using them with anybody that you're having trouble communicating with. One of the most universal phrases you can use is looking the other person comfortably in the eye. Tell me, what do you need from me right now? Notice how that feels. Have you ever tried that? We communicate, in my opinion, for five reasons. Most often, people are unaware of why they are communicating together, or they're only vaguely aware. If you ask another person, because there seems to be no point, there's no focus, you have an argument going on, um, you're not feeling satisfied, if you ask the other person comfortably, not sarcastically, briefly, Tell me, what do you need from me right now? Listen for two or more of the five reasons we all communicate. If you don't know what they are, look at the little video that explains these five needs in the lesson two group of videos. The flip side of that you can also use is to look at your communication partner and say, this is what I need from you right now. That might sound like, I need to vent, can you listen to me? I need you to act, are you willing to listen to what I need? So, what do you need from me right now? And here's what I need from you right now. Are unusually powerful questions you can ask to promote effective communication. Can you imagine doing that? Think of anybody that you have trouble communicating with and imagine using either or both of those. What do you think would happen? Another useful thing that you can learn to how to do is recognize and say out loud to your partner, you know, right now we have a values conflict. If as you're listening and watching me right now, if you don't know what a values conflict is, they happen all the time in all relationships, all settings. You should find out what is a values conflict and what can you do about it. There's a video in the tips section of lesson two here on how to answer those questions. So what I'm proposing is start to become comfortable saying, you know, we have a values conflict. Would you join me in resolving this together? Another very powerful question you can ask or statement you can make. If you are feeling, for whatever combo of reasons, that the person you're with is not listening to you, or is not hearing you, or is not understanding you, an option you always have is to say, would you please give me a hearing check right now? If you don't know what a hearing check is, Watch the little video on hearing checks and empathic listening. That's one of seven communication skills that you can put to good use for yourself. So you always have the choice of asking, would you please give me a hearing check? The flip side of that is, let me give you a hearing check. I want to confirm that I'm hearing you accurately. Do you ever do that? Has anyone ever done that for you? Notice how that feels. 
These are phrases and questions most people don't routinely use, yet they could. Okay? Here's another powerful one. If you find yourself fighting, arguing, whining, complaining, pleading, hinting, those are all lose-lose communication options, often. Far better alternative is win-win problem solving. That's the seventh of seven skills you'll find in Lesson 2 in the Break the Cycle website. You know how to problem solve? It's a specific set of steps. Most people are, are unaware of the steps. Once you learn the steps, you're then empowered to look at your partner with whom you're fighting, arguing, or having some kind of disagreement. And if you're not having a values conflict, then you can say, would you problem solve with me? Real quickly, what that involves is getting clear on what do you need, what do they need, and how can you both get your needs met well enough in a way that feels good to both of you. That's problem solving. You can ask people to do that. Lots of variations. You can say, you know, I'm aware we're fighting right now. I don't want to do that. I'd rather problem solve. Will you do that with me? Many people don't know how to answer that question, so they'll need you to tell them. Our country is full of divorce. It's very popular, unfortunately. One of the reasons that I believe, as a family therapist and someone who's worked with hundreds and hundreds of troubled couples, one of the most powerful questions you can ask yourself and your partner, your primary partner, is if you're having difficulty communicating, you can say, what do you think is best for our relationship right now? Which alternative? You think X, I think Y. Which of these do you think is best for our relationship right now? Ever asked that question? Has anyone ever asked you that question? It really implies thinking about your priorities. As a therapist, what I've concluded is, usually, not always, if people put their own integrity and their holistic health first, their primary relationship second, and everything else third, unless the house is on fire. Often, long term, you'll feel more serene and your relationships will thrive if you keep those priorities. So an option to keep in mind is, what's best for our relationship right now? Which of several alternatives is the best? Another thing that you can say if you're aware of it, which is the first of seven skills, awareness, if you become aware that your partner, in your opinion, is not hearing you, you can say, without sarcasm and without the intention of guilt tripping, you know, I'm not feeling heard by you right now. The popular reflex instead of that is to say, you're not listening to me. That's an accusatory statement that usually evokes defensiveness, guilt, hurt, anger, frustration, those de uh, degrade communication. The objective statement, calmly with good eye contact, I'm not feeling heard right now. Then you can ask for a hearing check. So that's an option you have. A related option is to look at your partner and tell them informationally, you know, I can't hear you when you... <laughs> For instance, I can't hear you when you don't look at me. I can't hear you when you raise your voice. I can't hear you very well when you swear. I can't hear you very well when you name call me, when you criticize me, when you blame me, when you attack me, when you bring up old baggage, when you change the subject. I can't hear you very well. It gets in the way of my really listening to you. That's just straight feedback. It's not an attack, it's not a criticism, it's information. That's an option you have. A powerful option that many people are unaware of. If you're with somebody that rambles on and on and on, people who lecture, people who monologue, 
people who think, uh, who talk about things that aren't really interesting to you, but they think they are. They need to talk. You don't need to listen to them. Look them in the eye, and when they take a breath, say, you know, I'm really feeling flooded right now. Or, I'm really sorry, I'm not interested in the subject you're talking about. I can't find a way of being interested. <clears throat> Have you ever felt someone was just talking on and on and on to you? What do you think they would do if you said, I'm really feeling overwhelmed by all the information you're giving me. Can you slow down? I get the feeling you don't need anything from me, you just need to talk. Is that right? Any of these options are meant respectfully, not as attacks, not as being snide or sarcastic or um, implying you're one up and they're one down. Uh-uh. That's not the purpose of these options. It's to alert the other person to the process that's going on in you and between you two. That's the purpose of all these tips, is to raise your mutual awareness and look for helpful options. One last tip that I want to offer you, in case you've seen the video about awareness bubbles, you have the option, if you notice it, if you are aware that, say, your partner has a one-person awareness bubble, they're only focused on themselves, or they're only focused on you, and you are focused on them and you. You have a two-person bubble, they have a one-person bubble. That usually means ineffective communication. If you notice that, an option you have is to say, you know, our awareness bubbles don't match right now. And you can have a conversation about that. Most people won't know what you're talking about, so you'll have to tell them what an awareness bubble is. In order to do that, you have to learn what it is. The last tip I want to offer you right now is a powerful one. If someone goes on and on and on, you can look at them and when they take a breath, you can say, help me understand, why are you telling me this? They may not know. Talk about it together. I just realized that <clears throat> I left out perhaps the most or one of the most important options you have um, <clears throat> if you're having a dispute with somebody or a conflict. <clears throat> um, it is a question that often will stop people cold, uh, especially if you give it with good eye contact, calmly and respectfully. The question is, tell me, whose needs are more important to you right now, yours or mine? This is a trick question. The real, the best answer to the question is, your needs and mine are of equal importance to me right now. If people are controlled by a false self, if they're trying to manipulate you or get their way and they don't care about you, they'll feel guilty or uncomfortable saying, well, my needs come first. Maybe they won't. But it leaves room for conversation then about, I'm having trouble listening to you or negotiating with you or problem solving with you if you don't care about my needs as much as your own. There are many variations on this. The theme is an essential for effective communication is mutual respect and that includes self-respect. So, I've tried to illustrate for you a whole group of different um, options that you have in conversation with another person if the communication in your opinion is not going as well as you'd like. I hope you'll review this video several times. There's an awful lot of information in here. There's a lot of options. Um, you can also go to lesson two in the Break the Cycle website. There's an article that gives even more questions, statements, phrases you can use to improve the outcome of your communication in important situations. So, I hope you'll study Lesson 2, study the related videos here about Lesson 2 and the other tips, and enjoy 
improving the outcome of your communication. Thanks for watching.